Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome what to up, y'all? This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tony Talks. Rick. Um, I'm here with Freeway Rick. Rick, I'm going to put you on mute real quick with something in your background. But I'm going to bring you right in. Um, this is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tony Talks. Looking forward to having a great discussion. This is kind of a pop-up show. I wanted to talk about this PNB Rock um, and talk about what we saw here, happen here in Los Angeles. I brought Freeway Rick on so that he can give his opinion on, on how it all went down. We're going to use maps. We're going to use Instagram posts. We're going to just show the reality of like how this all happened so everybody can get a better perception on this thing because I'm getting a lot of questions about how and where he was at. We got people all across this country coming into this chat. Let me bring Rick in. Rick, what up with you? Hey, what up, Tony? So I got Freeway Rick here. Uh, we gonna talk this PNB Rock. Condolences to his family. Let me start there. Um, nobody wants to see anybody get shot down anywhere, but I wanna give this thing context. We're gonna go through a lot more things after Rick is on the line. But I wanted to start off with one of the uh, one of the, I guess you could say OGs of Los Angeles, let alone what per people perceive as urban culture. You know, you got Took on one side with gangbang, and you got Rick on the other side for all of it, it its negatives and whatever else came with it with uh, drug sales. And I just wanted to bring Rick in to talk about because you know part of what people don't understand is that the drug culture and the gang culture went hand in hand. So Rick is very familiar with the neighborhoods and everything. And I just want to say, I'm going to open the floor. Let you get five minutes, whatever, to talk about PMB Rock. Yeah, well, you know, that, that's my neighborhood where you got killed. Uh, I guess you could say, in my neighborhood, I got killed. Uh, and I remember when I was in high school, that area is a cumulative of about four games. Rick, well, let me say this here. Then it was about, then it was about four games, but now it could be more. I'm not, I'm not ready how many gangs go over there, but I know all the original gangs are still there. The, the, 8, 1, 8, the 87th Street, the Hoovers, uh, the Main Street, uh, as well as the Swine. So we're talking about a hot bed of activity. Uh, that is probably one of the most dangerous spots in Los Angeles that you can really look at. So for somebody to be over there wearing uh, $100,000, $200,000 for security and not have it. But it's having some kind of pass. So, but the people who know you, what they respect, you can have to be out of line. Sure, but you had to do with a $100,000, $200,000 chain on. Uh, We're going to go through some details with this PNB Rock situation. Um, Rick. One of the other things that I'm looking at, and I want to bring you in on the context, because I'm getting a lot of questions from people that aren't from here talking about like, you know, is that the hood and this and that. I'm gonna pull. Up, I'm pulling up a map. You can't see it, but just in your head, think about where all the Roscos are at. Roscos is a chain. So essentially, um, when it comes to that chain, there's a lot of Roscos all around, and so for him to actually. So Roscoe's is a chain. And so when you look at Roscoe's, they got it in Hollywood. They got it over here in La Brea. They got another one right by the airport on Manchester as well. And this one is way over here on Maine. So what I think is interesting about this whole thing for me is what it took for him to go over there by Maine. When you pull up Expedia, Rick, ain't no hotels over there. It's all motels. And you would know better than anything else. You have to wonder the me- you have to wonder the mentality because you get off in the airport just for everybody to get a kind of map on this Los Angeles thing because I, I, I this is one of the things I wanted to do with, with the show. LAX is right here. I'm bringing that up on the screen. You you know where it's at, Rick. For him to to go to that Roscoe's, he had the Pasco Roscoe's. When they first said he got shot, Rick, and they said Manchester, I, I said, oh, my, he probably got shot over there by the one in the airport, the tourist one. Inglewood, Inglewood. But in actuality, he I, got, said, I said, I said the same thing, and then I was saying, I wonder how they got by the security guard. So the money Inglewood got about put the security guard. Wait, so the one in Inglewood got more security? Yeah, they got about three security. Two of them. It's all the way. But you know, every time I put somebody, my friend is coming down, I usually see them at that rock store to call me, say, uh. We at Roscoe's, because it's kind of like a tourist attraction. So 
They called me an acne and they used to need me to take rice pills. I don't eat rice pills though. You know, I'm vegan still. Yeah, you so so you talking about the one in Inglewood over on Manchester by the airport. So now, you know, we're looking at this sad situation. It looks like a whole family might have robbed, like not a whole family, but basically everybody was involved with this on the robbery over there. And, you know, what's your takeaway from the whole thing? Because as I look at it, I take away this is just a sad situation. Well, you know, one thing that the one on Manchester is kind of like, it's a tourist attraction. It's a tourist attraction, too, but it's kind of, that's where the tough guys go. So the tough people go to the one on Manchester and Maine. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, 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 it's a real trip because I think for a lot of black Americans, we running into making celebrities out of anything. And I'm not saying that, you know, you can like whatever music you want, but at the end of the day, what we're running into is we create this world where like these people are superhuman and i believe there is a culture now going on where these young people are basically using instagram to make other people feel bad about themselves and there is a consequence now i don't believe anybody should get shot down but it's a tough times out here recession everything else and you got to be leery and aware aware of how you moving it's interesting because i think back to when we was doing all the um the doc and everything else so much i learned from you about how you had to move as, as somebody who had money amongst a lot of people who didn't. And it feels like all these people have no idea how to move around people who don't have money. I, I agree. Uh, and, you know, I'm still staying in the hood. I'm still living in the hood. Uh, and, and I don't have the kind of money that, that PM Rock has. You know, I, I got a few, few hundred dollars in my pocket. Uh, but they, they come at me like that as well. You know, I have to walk and act a certain way, you know, while I'm in the hood because this is a dangerous time right now in the hood. Most of the people in the hood don't have a hundred dollars. They don't have fifty dollars. So if you're over there and people are asking you for twenty dollars, thirty dollars for something to eat and gas, you know that it's bad times. Yeah, man. You know, um I just I just kinda wanted to bring you on. I don't want to hold you on this Sunday because I wanted to actually have this discussion about this P and B rock. Cause I'm looking at this thing and I'm just like, how did this man get over? He had to pass a Roscoe's to go to that Roscoe's and ain't no hotels over there. Everybody has a right to go where they go, but I need people to understand. If you look at a map of Los Angeles and I'm pulling that up for everybody, um, Rick, all the, the, the exciting stuff is by the beaches. It's right here. It's nowhere near that Roscoe's. So it's almost like, is there an identity crisis going on, particularly with rap part of black celebrity where you gotta be a tough guy and, and you know, at the end of the day, you run with the bulls, things might happen. And I, I condolences to his family, but none of this made sense. Yeah, I, I can agree. When I found out he, he got killed at that at that uh, at that particular Roscoe, I, I was I was shocked. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, got, I mean, because you know, in LA, you know, you could stumble up on the wrong people anywhere, but to actually go into their community, you know, where they live. Uh, it is, you know, wearing wearing that type of. Stuff. I mean, it's like jumping into a, a shark tank and and, and with, with blood on it and wondering why you got bit. Yeah, like especially in these times with the recession and and uh, you know the, the whole people are struggling. And I'm not justifying anyone murdering anybody or robbing people, but like at the end of the day, I, I just don't understand the mentality. But I do understand it because I see these people as content producers. And the content they produce is to make people feel bad about themselves. You know, they basically come around people that are abject poor and do everything opposite of what you did when you were, because you had to hide because people would people would abduct you and everything else, like the, the 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 drug dealers in the community. So you had to hide your wealth. We have went a counter for a, a, the other way where their production of content isn't music in my view, it's opulence. And they don't even know how to do that well. So it's like a bunch of Versace bags and a, a woman who you buying bags for and y'all in the Gucci store. And then you giving out your location because it's on Instagram. As I understand it, you didn't even, nobody even knew who you look like, what you look like. And I'm not saying that justify the dope game. I'm saying this in context of you can't have wealth around abject poor people without major consequences because you're asking for problems every time. 
And for me, also, PNB Rock looked like somebody from Ladera, straight up. And I'm not saying that to say anybody from can't be light skinned over there. That's not what I'm saying. We got something in LA where there's a west side and then there's a, 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 a east side. And what you see right here is he don't know that black folks that's from the west side really don't go past what what uh Figueroa? What's that? Figueroa? <laughs> so he all he, quit, yeah, so he looking like somebody who who parents got money up in Ladera, and I'm not talking about what he is or where he come from uh in, in Philadelphia. And he looking like, what is this West Side dude doing over on the East Side? You get what I'm saying, Rick? Right, absolutely. Yeah, and then he got chains on. And, 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 and what you're saying is, is, is kind of the mentality of, of, of rap music right now, you know. And that's kind of why I don't, I don't, I don't look at it because it's all about disrespect, you know, other people. You know, I'll take your woman, my car bigger than yours. That's what I'm saying. And I don't think. I so, and, and I don't think that the young babies have a real understanding of the 70s. It was like nobody had a car. Like one person had, it was like people got on the bus for a date kind of thing. Not saying nobody, but like it wasn't regular like now because the money been cheap. Like we really don't understand both what's coming and how abject poverty shows up. So there's been this world where you can come around other black people that have nothing and show this fabulous life, as good or bad as your actual life is on Instagram, and tell people where you at. You have this article come out where he actually says, basically, in so many words, that people be getting robbed. Well, if you know that, how about we don't ride this uh, 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 a, fa a fancy car and then sit up in the Roscoe's and you know that they take your pictures and all that, just eat. And, or how about we don't pass a, another Roscoe's? I'm just talking about you can do what you want. Rick, I was in South Africa. Up in South Africa and at a corner coffee shop, it's about 10 o'clock at night, maybe 9.30, right? And South Africa moved different. At night, that they locked the whole thing up, whole thing up. All the white people go, go in their house at like when nightfall comes. I walked outside the goat. Then I'm in South Africa. My South, my South Central's on full alert, though. So I walked outside. I looked down the street, and I seen feet scumbling under the, uh, under the car down the street. Whatever's in that liquor store ain't good, ain't enough for me to go down that street. I went right back into that coffee shop. It's like if he's supposed to be this rapper and he's supposed to know the hood, at least the basics of it, how you end up at that Roscoe's? And I, and again, I'm not here to, to say he should get murdered. I'm not here to, to say he should get robbed. I'm just here to just paint the picture to show you guys. He passed the Roscoe's by the airport to go to Roscoe's on Main. And this is not just hood. It's like only people that go over there is really like locals. And I just wanted to frame that for everybody. Any last thing you want to say to the audience? No, that, that would be like jumping in the shark tank. Going over there is like jumping in the shark tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I appreciate you coming. And I would just ask you this. What would you say? What would you say to any black celebrity, black rapper particularly, about coming to Los Angeles? They better know where they're going. You know, they better know how to dress. You know, I dress down, Tony. I could, I could, I could dress way nicer than I do, but I dress so that I fit in uh, because I don't want my people to feel inferior uh, uh, to me. And when they don't feel inferior, then they feel as if you one of them. And and, and uh, people gotta understand if they're not doing nothing for the hood, they gotta be careful coming to the hood. Hey, Rick, you know what else I noticed? You know what else I noticed? Um, L.A. move a little different. And when I say that, I, got, I still had a map up for everybody. Y'all from, like, the South, like Atlanta as an example, y'all got a lot of, like, B-level, C-level, even C-level little entertainers and rappers, and they come to local, like, bars and clubs and appear. In L.A., like, when we met Drake, he came from the back room or something. Dre came from a, there's something called the birds, and the birds is up in, in the hills, and that's up here where I, well, on the arrows where I'm showing y'all on the map. Well, when he, when me and Rick sat down and had dinner, he parked somewhere else, not on Sunset, and came up a secret exit, and left that secret exit. The reason why I bring that up is the same thing with Jamie Foxx. He lived far out, like Calabasas. Our celebrities don't be at the Roscoe's on Maine. But like I think that there's a culture other places where they celebrities, they lower level celebrities really do be. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not. I'm saying like you're not gonna run into Dr. Dre or Ice Cube at the main and main and Broadway. They don't even come. They don't even come to South Central. You don't see those guys. Remember the incident with Shug happened only because they was in the hood shooting a movie. Other than that, Shug could never find them. And and so my point is not so much about degrading them. It's just saying our culture here, y'all coming into this place, and y'all don't understand the culture of the place. I got a map and I'll put it in the final version, Rick, where it showed them income levels of black folks in certain, I mean, not black folks, of, of Los Angeles, Milinos, all up and down to 110. If you go east, the whole thing is like zero to $22,000 in income. He driving into that with a $200,000 chain, probably in a $100,000 car with this girl that's taking a bunch of pictures of herself. You ever seen somebody take pictures? of they self while y'all eating you know how much attention that is and and and, and y'all don't understand like we don't move like that here you leave that in atlanta or wherever else you from meaning jamie dr dre all everybody no don't go to maine if you want roscoe's order it and have it sent to the house that's it rick Any, i'll let you go i agree with that all right rick i'm out uh -uh. all right i'm out Thanks, Rick, for having for coming on the show. Thank you for Rick for coming on such short notice. I just kind of talked to him right now on the phone. I thought that'd be a good ad. Now, so, so when I talk about this, this is what we talk about that chain. And this man and this girl from somewhere else, and she taking pictures of herself you know, at a at a table while they eat, probably. And he out here doing this, and she got the Versace bag. And for those people that don't know, we talk about $1,800, $1,300 bag. But we got to make sure that everybody see the Versace on the side and see that she's, a, a for him, an attractive young woman. And he, we got to know what he has. Again, none of this makes any sense. But do what you do. But we are in Los Angeles, bro. We don't care about that. What I'm telling you is that this is the content. The content ain't the music. You believe what you want. The content is to make you feel bad as you drive Uber because he got a better life than you. Now, you can go look at his background and his history and, and figure out why he would do that. And that's up to you. But, like, that's the content. So this is what he was looking like on the way to Roscoe's. He got a Louis Vuitton shirt on and a $100,000 chain. And he on the wrong side of town looking like he's from Ladera Heights with good parents. So got condolences to his family, but I wanted to give context most dangerous areas in los angeles ranked they got broadway and manchester which is one street over number nine i grew up in lamert park um that's like a crossroads between several gangs all of the most violent neighborhoods in la county are just to the east of inglewood inglewood itself however is not represented due to lack of crime data provided by police it is safe to say that parts of inglewood are also not safe below are the top 50 areas with the most violent crimes in los angeles county the total number of crimes within this time period are also included. I want to go back because I'm about to show you guys something to hear where this Roscoe's is at. And shout out to Rick for giving us context. He had to drive past this Roscoe's. He could have went to this one on La Brea, which is the known one. He could have went up in Hollywood. We going to Maine. All right. All right. That's how we going to play. And so I want everybody to understand this in context. When you cut, click Expedia and look for hotels, where you don't see no hotels, where that Roscoe's is at. So it ain't even like he was living, he was eating across the street from his hotel or something like that. You got to purposely drive over here because you're trying to take some videos of yourself at the main Roscoe's. Can we talk about it? Condolences to his family. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So you from Philly, Pennsylvania, looking like this with these glasses and this $200,000 chain on, and you're going to ride over to this Roscoe's over here on Main in, near Compton and all that because you want to take videos with your girlfriend and look richer to everybody. Can we talk about it? I just want to, I mean, do you guys get it? Let me pull it up one more time. I brought Freeway Rick on to give you context. Now I'm giving you context. And this is what I, what Rick was referencing. This is the gang injunction map from 2014. 
here in Los Angeles and where are there a lot of gangs where he was at where did he drive past what was a lot safer if you notice what Rick said is the one over on Manchester got more security too so he over there hold on but I referenced something when I was talking to Rick that I want to make sure everybody understands because we have an educated conversation this is a map that the Asians give out, I guess, to their people before they come to Los Angeles. In this map, what it shows is income levels by area. So he drove past all this better income into an area where people are making between $0 and $22,000 as a household. Over here. That's where we at. Let's zoom in. We over here where people are abject poor with a $200,000 chain on, taking Instagram photos with a Versace bag probably, doing too much. You got Instagram pictures where she got money in her purse and she opened up her purse and she got bread. Whew. The doublets is to his family, but I wanted to give context to this whole story. See, this box right here is what part of like, it's what... It, encompasses the, the narrative of LA in some ways because this box is like the 405 even though the 405 really runs out here the 405 the 10 the 105 and the 110 and when Rick say that he was running this like this is where the where his name came from and everything else and I, I wasn't I'm not here to praise Rick as a drug dealer I'm here to contextualize the difference between these new age content creators and like drug dealers, because they would get abducted. They had to have Tommy guns in the car for not the police for getting not getting abducted. When you watch the wire and stuff, well, that was really happening. And I think that as a result, what these people are doing is like trying to paint themselves in the image of something they don't understand. 310-388-3499 if you want to call in. Again, I just I, I'm here just for a short show. I'm glad Rick got the call. And this is the Roscoe's that, that it happened at. This is not a, not a high-end area. Again, I showed you guys the incomes. People are making like $15,000, $18,000 for a household in Los Angeles. They call it Roscoe's Plaza. So they got a Roscoe's, a spot and nails, the market that sell beer and wine, along with some groceries. <sighs> Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles, Manchester and Maine. This is Los Angeles again. He got killed everywhere. There ain't no events or nothing. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This young boy. I want to talk about it. Caller, what's your name? Where you calling from? Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, this is my question. Okay. I've been traveling and I've been all over LA. I don't understand why this girl would go live with, you know, when she's hanging out with him. How do we know that she set him up? How, did, how do we know he didn't go live and say, hey, this is where we at? Well, uh, whoever. Well, what you know I'm saying, what I mean? well, what we what we saying is, is, I understand you're a traveling nurse, but, like, that's why I kind of brought Freeway in. Because, like, what happens in, in Los Angeles and really for urban culture across the nation, good and bad of it, Took represent Tookie uh, represented the the Crips and the nexus of the Crips, and Freeway Rick represented the dope side of it. So I'm bringing him in okay. to anchor Los Angeles. We don't need no setup when you go to Maine. See, if we over in Hollywood, we can start talking about setups. Meaning, if we are over here, let me pull it back up. So because that's okay. why that's why I did this show. If we over here in Hollywood, we can I think we start talking about setups and how how they do it and all this. But when we over here on Maine, you ain't got no hotel, because ain't no hotels. You got to drive past the Roscoe's. Right. So we just deal with, and, and now we know that it was a family that actually robbed him. I'm going to read this to you, and then I'll get your opinion about what we know now. Uh, father, teenage son charged in killing of rapper PNB Rock. A man who was arrested in Las Vegas on Thursday and his 17-year-old son, this is sad, man, were charged with murder. And let me mute you. I'm going to mute you because of your background a little bit, but I'm going to come right to you right after I finish reading. Okay, Don't, Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. As soon as I finish talking, I'm going to come right to you. 
So uh, a man who was arrested in Las Vegas on Thursday and his 17-year-old son were charged with murder in the fatal shootings of rapper P&B Rock at a South Los Angeles restaurant, authorities said. An FBI-led fugitive task force took 40-year-old Freddie Lee Tron into custody at about 1 p.m. Los Angeles said he had been charged earlier in the day with one count of murder, two counts of second-degree robbery, and one count of conspiracy to commit robbery. The district attorney office said his son, who was arrested Tuesday, was charged with the same counts. Tron, 38-year-old wife, Chantel Trone, the boy's stepmother, was also arrested Tuesday and was charged with one count of being an accessory after the fact to the killing. She pled not guilty at her arraignment Thursday. The teen who remains in jail made an initial appearance in juvenile court and was told to come back, uh, told next month, something uh, is something coming. It's not clear when Freddie will appear in court for extradition. You gotta realize again, the sadness of this all thing is like, these people are abject poor. And where punishment is, it needs to be given, punishment needs to be given. Nobody should murder anybody. But the sad thing that's happening is that the decadent veil, and we'll talk about that in a second, where, we, where black celebrity has basically decided to cover up black poverty for white wealth to have a good old time and not deal with our lack of wealth is really, really, really doing too much now. And so I'm gonna come right to you, caller. Caller, what, what do you think about that uh, that family having done this? Um, I, you know, it's so many things wrong with that. First of all, This is this is the thing that's why i'm saying the whole i believe that what we've done is we've evolved being an entertainer into being because a lot of these people are transplants y'all watch on youtube and then on instagram they transplants nothing wrong being a transplant but like what is you doing with the, with the whole i'm from south central i'm going you know i meant to talk to rick about nip um you know because i and what are you you're just doing a lot you just came here for for whatever fame you wanted but like, nonetheless, what's right. interesting about it is you don't even know what you project. This look projects like you come from, because we had a, a evolved two-parent household like group that grew up in, that Ladera Heights created. You projecting the wrong look to even be over there and blend in. But if you are going to go, did you put your chains up? Did, did you tell this little girl to not be doing Instagram photos? Why are we going over there? Can we just go to Manchester one? We move different here. That's what I was trying to frame to y'all earlier. Like our black celebrities, they don't be in in the middle of the grimy like out in Atlanta. I've seen that before. Like you know, out in the oh, middle. Uh, yeah, they don't do that here. So it's like you. Right. Can, I'm in LA. You are absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah, and so and so and so what I'm saying is just what we're seeing is that the content. This is to your question. The content isn't music no more. It's just to make black people that drive Uber feel bad about themselves. That's just me. Everybody can take it away how they want to. If you call that entertainer, y'all be calling people millionaires. They ain't no, they ain't no millionaires if I gave them a million dollars. These people are taking every dollar that they have and then putting it on their outfit today. Uh, that's what they do. So let me ask you something. <laughs> in, in every thing that him getting shot, it's like, okay, No, I don't think it was that organized, but I, I, I'm not saying it couldn't have been because he was on Instagram talking about, you know, uh, showing himself. And there's another video I seen where he his girl opened up the the purse and she got money in the purse and uh, like so. I, but I don't think it was that organized. I, you know, I believe if I had to call right. it, it's more more on the spot. You see somebody with that kind of chain and you're abject poor. I want that to, to eat. Now I don't justify that. I don't think it's right. But I just wanted to bring into the con conversation regular folk. And then I wanted to bring in somebody uh, who sits at the center of it in terms of Rick. Thank you so much for calling. I'm going to take a few more callers. All right. Thanks, Tom. Great caller. Instagram post of rapper PNB Rock at Roscoe's may have led to killing, LAPD chief says. The gunman who killed PNB Rock at the Roscoe's of Chicken and Waffles restaurant in South Los Angeles demanded jewelry and other valuables before getting into a struggle with the rapper and opening fire. L.A. Police Chief Michael Moore said Tuesday. Moore said Monday's attack occurred soon after the rapper was tagged online 
as being at the restaurant and police are investigating whether that is what prompted the attack. Rock 30, whose name was Rock Kim Allen, had been at the restaurant with his girlfriend who had posted a location tag photo in a since deleted Instagram post. So this is what we doing. You know, we going we going keep that to yourself. But they can't do that because that's the that's the content. You know, y'all keep telling me about these people and like what's happening is you're not looking at their background. So they be having low self-esteem from their backgrounds. As I understand, he had a tough upbringing in and out of like uh, a homeless shelters or something of the sort. So this is his moment. And he feel good about himself. That ain't it, though. And I'm just telling you, if it is it, there are consequences. And I, I'm a sad day that it had to come down to this for him. Caller, what's your name? Where you call from? Hey, Joe. Hey, what's up? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you now. Give me a take. What's going Out of Winter, Salem, North Carolina. Hey, what's and up, Will? What I, I want to I want to call in on this because me myself, I've been I've been in those streets too. I've been I was locked up there ten years a whole nine yards. You spot on what you're saying because what what we getting from a lot of these celebrities is this: they want to paint that image of being thug. I'm the tough. I'm tough. I'm a thug. What they ain't what they ain't understanding what comes with that. It's a dude out there like I used to be. That ain't like the dogs is gonna play them. But when you play in these streets, what comes with it is the wolves. And, and, and like you said, it ain't got to be a fitter, but it's a dude out there just like I used to be. They get that thing on me, waiting for the opportunity to catch somebody like him, flip it, and I'm gonna put that heat on him, and I'm gonna take his shit. You see? That's what it is. It ain't a setup. You go in the and you go in the in the line in the wolf den, you're gonna come out with the fame. Then you might come out with a spot, you might come out in a body bag. But like you said, that area there is where the wolves are at. But what he wanted to do was basically like going to the zoo, like so you go to the zoo and the line that says do not cross this area. It's a lion here. What he wanted to do though. He only jump in there and get a close up picture with the lion. And the lion takes his head off. And everybody blames the lion. And the and the girl having and, 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 and the girl and the girl having a whole good time as well. She having a good old time playing around. Oh, oh, yeah. child. This is kid shit. Love it. But uh hey man, I, I, hey man, to your point, I wanna read something. Uh I wanna read something to okay. you that I, I, I wrote uh, some years ago. I told y'all that the decadent veil is real. And I want to read that to you now. Decadent, the decadent veil. And I'm gonna mute you while I said that. And come right to you. So don't leave. Don't leave. I, I write this. Uh, this I want to read the second part right over here. The veil created by mass. And this is the decadent veil. It's really Black America's celebrity wealth illusion. And you see Oprah, Kobe before he just he died. The uh, condolences. And you see uh, Jay Z and Beyonce are in the background right here. Um, the, and I wrote this back in 2014. The veil created by mass media, sports organizations, and our own psyche in Black America is often one of safety through presentation. It is an inversion of the same model implemented by Dr. Martin Luther King so many years ago, except where Dr. King instilled global empathy by showing images of Bull Connor uh, disciples, water hosed in Black teenagers. Instead, NBA commissioner Adam Silver hands Black teenagers million dollar deals. And ESPN then projects that as a normal image of black life across the globe, uh, black American life across the globe, creating apathy for black America's truly dire financial straits. This all being shown despite there being a prison rate amongst young African-American males that is higher than we have seen in any modern society in history. While media projects Beyonce signing a Pepsi $50 million ad campaign throughout the World Wide Web, the fact that black single mothers across America have a median net worth of mere five dollars falls in the shadow of the singularity of her financial success. And so, you know, I'll come right to you and let you uh, end out because we're gonna come to the end of the show soon. Yeah, Tom, your decadent veil is yeah, your decadent veil is spot on, man. It, everything you said in that article is spot on. We see it. And we're seeing the people trying to pretend. And just like you said, the whole concept of what he wanted to do was basically where I would have got trapped in the mouth for doing that for child. And what my mama would tell me is, let's say she gave you a piece of candy, right? What would happen if you throw a piece in somebody else that didn't have a piece of candy like, nan, nanny, boo, boo, I got a piece of candy. Here's what the piece of candy from you. You see, then we got celebrities, both of Facebook, and both the social media that share things doing the same thing like you see. They basically looking at people in the project saying, man, nanny, boo-boo, look what I got and you don't got. 
Yeah, the, what they don't understand is that the word of Christ. And the, and, the, and the other thing that's happening is these people are very often very low educated and then had hard backgrounds, whether it be orphans or living in uh in uh in uh homeless shelters and nothing, you know, people got comfortable with what they come through. But we just don't need your self-esteem issue coming out into social media when you get a little money. People are literally, I don't think regular folks understand what the people do. Meaning, like if you ever got if you ever got like 40 grand or 50 grand in a check, we all could take that and just get it in cash and show it on Instagram. But it takes a certain low self-esteem to do it. And so that's what they are, what's going on right now. And like, you know, for me, I'm just bringing this to you because I wanted to bring in Rick, but I also wanted to bring in myself to tell y'all, I have no idea what y'all talking about. I'm looking at this reality of this situation and asking the question, how do you pass this many Roscoe's? Let me bring it up again, because that's one of my main things. Like, I, I don't think that y'all understood because you think it's just one Roscoe. Now, he had to pass this one, not go to the one in Hollywood, not go to the one. And his hotel was obviously somewhere here because ain't no other hotels to go to this one on Maine that people from L.A. don't even go to. I'm just telling you, all this, all this, and then we're going to put up a, a, that we here too. We're going to post that we here because we got money and sh and we playing games and we playing house. All right, caller, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much. Woo-wee! What a show. We got Versace bags. Homicides in Los Angeles reached highest level in 15 years during the first half of 2022. According to Eyewitness News, analysis of the most recent Los Angeles Police Department data there were 181 homicides in the first six months of 2022 compared to 180 in the first six months of 2021. While these two time periods had almost the same number of record homicides, they represent a 29% increase from 2020 and a 34% increase from the average of the same time between 2015 and 2019. People is, is hungry out here, bro. And you're going to have to understand, shortly before his death, PNB Rock said robberies of rappers are so common. Just weeks before he was shot and killed at a Los Angeles restaurant, late rapper, PNB Rock talked to a, a DJ Academics, and he said, I never got robbed, never in my life. I ain't going to never say never because I'm not superstitious or nothing like that, but I haven't been robbed. Okay. Condolences to his family again. Most dangerous areas in Los Angeles rank number nine, Broadway and Manchester, one street over from where this Roscoe's was at. We look at a map of Los Angeles again, and we see all of the actual locations for tourists which he is lax is here he over here where nothing is at and the people have barely no income zero to twenty two thousand household income that means two three people making twenty two thousand dollars together and that's where he at right up in here with no pass he ain't with freeway rick or somebody like that that really could like vouch it even with, for freeway rick you heard from him they coming at him so I just wanted to come to you, had a discussion about PNB Rock, and no way am I saying that it's justified he got killed. I just wanted to dead the whole thing about him just being in the hood, or even Roscoe's contextualizing Roscoe's for you and how many Roscoe's are here and how what he had to do to actually go to that one. And I just wanted you to have your own view after that. Thank you so much for tuning in on this Sunday. Let's keep it 100.